The world of robotics has been evolving from sci-fi novels through movies and now in real life, disrupting almost everything from industries, agriculture to even space. As robots are becoming more and more advanced in their ability and intelligence day by day, their technology, be it hardware or software that helps people to build them, is also evolving along with it. Today, we are going to be talking about such a technology that revolutionized robotics by open source. Let's discuss about the robot operating system. Hi, I'm Pavish and this is Basics Explained. The Robot Operating System, or ROS, is a software technology that has been revolutionizing robotics for the past 10 years. But what is ROS? Why is it used in every advanced robot built these days? It is mentioned in the ROS website and many other ROS community sites as a flexible framework or middleware for writing robot software and as a collection of modular software tools and libraries that helps in creating complex and robust robot behavior. Well, what does that mean? Let's break it down. The robot operating system, even though it has the name, is not exactly an operating system like Windows, Mac or Linux. But ROS has some properties of an operating system. An operating system is a bundle of hundreds and thousands of software modules that work together to complete a single task that a user might need, like copying files from one directory to another or drawing and dropping files between folders. Even though these tasks may sound simple from a user's perspective, these tasks are pretty hectic without an OS. An OS creates an environment within the computer in which thousands of software modules work together synchronously and asynchronously to complete a single task. ROS works like this. Even though ROS doesn't have a GUI like Windows or Mac, nor it doesn't do system operations for the user like copying or pasting files, ROS provides a sub-environment within an operating system like Ubuntu and allows multiple robot software files to communicate with each other seamlessly. Not only this, Ever since ROS was put out as open source, the community is building more and more advanced software tools and libraries for robotics development. For example, imagine building an obstacle avoiding robot. It might be easy by using simple Arduino and a single software file. But imagine building the same obstacle avoiding robot with additional capabilities of mapping its environment using additional and advanced sensors like LiDAR and knowing its exact location within that map. Yep, that needs a lot more programming than a single software file and the ROS community provides such advanced software libraries that can be used to make such a robot. And that is called very cool. What is more cooler is that there is a software called as Gazebo that runs alongside with the ROS environment and helps users to build and simulate robots virtually. This means you need to only have a good computer and with ROS and Gazebo running in it so that you can build your dream robot without actually spending any money on it. When dealing with ROS, there are three terms that you should know about. They are master, node, topic. The master is the core of the ROS environment. It initiates the ROS environment and starts listening for any request or data from ROS related software modules. The node is any robot software file built to work under the ROS master. Usually, there will be lots of nodes pre-built in ROS network ready for us to access and use them. Every node in a ROS environment communicate with the same and only master on whether they are expecting input or giving output along with other personal stuff like their names, type of the input or the output they give, their recipients or sender's name, etc. So if you want to know what all nodes are currently running and what they are doing, just ask the master. Topics are channels of data transfer between nodes. When node A wants to output a data that node B can use as input, both the nodes register a common name with the master as their channel of communication and the master takes this name and creates a channel of communication with that name and this channel is called a topic. A topic can have any number of subscribers but only one publisher. Just like a teacher in a classroom of kids, the publisher node keeps sending data into the topic and all the subscribing nodes can receive it and do whatever they want to do with that. Some kids might be highly interested and involved, while some kids just listen and does nothing. Oh, and some can even leave the class and the teacher wouldn't care and keeps on publishing. ROS is simple enough that anyone with the knowledge of using a Linux computer and know how to program in C++ and Python can conquer ROS. The modular way of programming and easy communication protocols between multiple robot software files 
had made it easier to make advanced and complex robots using ROS. I hope you have learned the basics of the robot operating system. To learn more about ROS by building robots, check out my channel. Until then, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to this channel and make sure to click the bell icon to get notified. This is Pavish, signing off for Basic Explain. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.